Let us start with a little thought experiment. So I want everybody here to close his eyes, her eyes. Yes, close it, I mean it. So now imagine that you're on a tourist boat. A tourist boat in an old European city. It's a beautiful day, the sunlight shining on the water, you see all this. The houses are passing by. But now, let us add a little twist to this story. Now, imagine that in this world that you are seeing, the speed of light is only 20 kilometers per hour. What do you see now? You can open your eyes. So, well, in this crazy world with its low speed of light, you would see something like this. Huh? And of course, it is very hard to imagine this, that's clear. I mean, it are precisely this type of thought experiments that Einstein was doing when he discovered this theory of relativity. But now, wouldn't it be great if we could like, boost our own imagination, if we could, so to speak, see the world through Einstein's eyes? <laughs> so this is the general idea. We have this great technology, great new medium, VR, virtual reality. Let us try to use it to bring out some of the beautiful science that is hiding deep inside nature. For instance, relativity. It's a beautiful theory, it's fundamental to our understanding of nature, but it's not like we see much of it in everyday life. Why? Well, because we move so slow. Slow when you compare it to this humongous light speed, 300,000 kilometers per second. And so this is what we did. We made this movie, indeed, Captain Einstein. And in this movie, this VR movie, we simulate a world with a much lower speed of light, like the scenario we were just trying to imagine. In this world, with this low speed of light, relativity is an everyday thing. And so you get to experience all the wonderful phenomena of relativity for yourself directly. So far, we've presented our movie at, well, different uh, festivals. It's always been great, um, well, because of the enthusiasm of the people. Um, people from all sorts of backgrounds, and we like to think that this enthusiasm is because, well, we made a, a cool movie, but uh, for sure, the enthusiasm is also there simply because this experience of VR is so great. Um, maybe let's have a little poll in the TED crowd. Who here? has already tried one of these VR sets. Let me see some hands. Okay. So for those who didn't, you should really try it. I mean, it's amazing. You put on these goggles, and immediately you're transported into this new virtual world in which you can look around. Let us pause just a tiny minute and think about the wonderful technology that is behind this. Like the phones we use, they work with smartphones. So, so the goggles we use, they work with smartphones. So it's basically just a screen of a smartphone in front of your face. You turn your head, and the image has to follow. So the phone has to know which direction you're looking at. at. It then has to compute the corresponding image, and then it has to display this image on the screen of the phone, and it's doing this in less than 20 milliseconds. I mean, it's amazing technology. And so when, when I was talking about VR, bringing out the hidden beauty in nature, well, here we see that VR is in some sense bringing out this wonderful technology that is hiding in all our smartphones. But okay, so we have this wonderful technology. What to do with this? This is always the big question, right? Well, we can, for instance, use it to get some new insights into the wonderful game of snooker. Now you're holding the cue. Oh, uh, wow. What are you going for, the six? Oh, oh wrong. Jesus f***ing hell. That is Did you try and lean on a table? Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. So, you need a table to play snooker. Huh? Back to our movie, the idea is not new. Already in 1939, George Gamow, the father of the Big Bang Theory, not the series, the actual theory, um, he writes this wonderful book, it's called Mr. Tompkins. And Mr. Tompkins wakes up in this dream world with a 
low speed of light. And here you see Mr. Tompkins racing through the city. Back to a shot of our movie. So there are some differences. Um, well, our movie is VR. Mr. Tompkins was a book. Um, George Gamow is putting Mr. Tompkins on a bike. We are putting you on a boat. Okay. Notice also the colors. And actually, these were the hardest uh, to get as scientifically right as possible. Um, like these, these blue and, and green, no, sorry, these blue purple bands that you are seeing, um, this is actually invisible light, infrared light, light that you would not normally not see, but you're now seeing it because you're going at 80% of light speed. And to give a bit more detail, what you actually see is an imprint of the greenhouse effect. So it turns out greenhouse gases, they block a certain portion of the infrared light, and this gives this rainbow effect. So if you go fast enough, you can actually see for yourself the greenhouse effect. OK, how did we make this? Um, well, like any other movie, you have to shoot it. Uh, it was a cold winter day, and to my right, you see uh, my colleague Jos and the VR specialist of our team, Willem, um, preparing the camera, attaching it to the boat. And it's a special camera. It's a 360 camera, and in a 360 camera, and in effect, it's four cameras tied together. So it's four cameras tied together because you want to film all directions, right? And so what you then get at first, well, is four images, OK? These then need to be stitched together into one big image, which gives you the information of all directions. It's a bit like a map of the world where you can go around at the sides, as you see. OK, if we would stack all these images and put them in our VR set, well, you would already have like a virtual uh, experience of a boat trip in Ghent, which is already nice, OK. But we wanted more. We wanted a relativistic boat trip. We wanted to go at the speed of light. So, well, we had to take out the boat, OK. And then came, for me personally, the coolest part. We had to figure out how this image would change in, uh, in a world with a slower speed of light. Um, well, this is the coolest part, because is this really the part where the equations of relativity that I hold so dear, that I really see them come alive? And, well, we got this. And so what I'm showing you is how the image gradually changed if we boost up our own speed up to two-thirds of light speed. You saw the colors, OK. Uh, you also saw that the buildings kind of shifted position. And this tells you that even if you would try to make a regular relativistic movie, you need this 360 information. You need the information of all directions. So in some sense, it feels like this 360 technology was really designed to visualize relativity. OK, now we have our images, add another boat, add the sound. The sound is from the band The Portables, which was great. Um, and then somebody Let's looking at... Let's speed up to 13 kilometers per hour, two sets of light speed. Look right. Check out the towers, how they are curved. So this was the point of view of somebody watching our movie, a short clip. Um, yeah, <laughs> what's up with these curved towers? And this is an effect that is the easiest to understand in our movie. I mean, the speed of light is finite, so we always look back in time. And the light of the sun, it takes eight minutes to get through here. Okay? So we see the sun eight minutes in the past. We see the nearest star four years in the past. Also here, you see me, I don't know, like 10 nanoseconds in the past, and in the back it's going to be something like 60 nanoseconds you see me in the past. In our virtual world, with the slow speed of light, well, you see the top of the tower a few seconds more in the past than the bottom of the tower. And for a moving tower, this gives you this distorted view. The voice you heard, I was babbling a bit, but the voice you heard is that of Maya Einstein, so she is the sister of Albert Einstein, and in our movie, she is still alive because she's always going near the speed of light, which keeps her young. Time goes slower if you go faster. Huh? Time is relative, super, well, relative, not always so relative. My time is up. Um, 
I hope you have an idea now how we can use virtual reality to give you a direct experience of the beauty and the mystery of relativity. Uh, and I thank you.